Hello there and welcome everyone to this video, um, ninth part in this video tutorial series about the OpenTK library. So um, in the previous part we learned about keyboard input and uh, in the seventh part we learned about the um, texture mapping. So in the seventh part I made a mistake which I need to correct here. So in the draw cube function down here uh, we were calling the bind texture function from after the gl begin call. So uh, you cannot actually call the uh, GL bind texture function between the GL begin and GL end call. So you need to call this before you begin drawing your primitives. So I'll erase this, uh, remove this from here, and I'll paste it here. But actually, this wasn't uh, this wasn't making any difference here because this texture was already binded here, and it was not uh, unbinded anywhere in the program. So this was not actually making any difference here. But when you create uh, your um, programs which have multiple textures this might um, give unexpected output if you call this after the gl begin function so you need to take care of this so that was all um, and now we can uh, get started with this part so um, this part is about transparency so we'll achieve transparency using alpha blending although alpha blending is quite a vast concept and I'll not be able to cover all of it here but but we'll cover en enough of it which will, which will um, which we will require to an, um, achieve transparency in our application so um, alpha blending also has other applications but this is the only one which will be focused on in this video tutorial so what is transparency so transparency is basically that an object is transparent if you can see uh, through that object um, and the object is translucent if you can see through the object but um, the um, objects behind the objects which, uh, which are visible from the object uh, which are visible through the object also have some component of the color of the translucent object so uh, and the and an, and an opaque object is actually the, an object uh, through which you cannot see so will um, um, achieve act, uh, so the actual thing which we're going to achieve here is the translucency but most of the time it it is often referred to as transparency so um, let's suppose that we have two objects here so this is the first object and I'll call it R R for red um, and this is an opaque object means you cannot see anything through it um, and we'll have another object in front of this opaque object which I'll call B so if this object is fully transparent, you can see R through B. Uh, but if it is fully transparent, and if you draw fully transparent object in OpenGL, actually mm, the object will not be visible. So you might uh, you might wanna draw an object as partially transparent, which is actually called translucent. So when object B is partially translucent and it is in front of R, I'll draw the lines uh, this way, and it is in front of R. So this is this is how it will be visible so the area of overlap with between these two objects this area um, actually uh, has the color components of both B and both both B and R and the extent to which um, the color component of uh, R is present inside this and um, the how the uh, how much color component of each object is present in uh, inside this overlapped area is actually calculated through alpha value so this is achieved through blending and now let's see how we can achieve blending in our code so I'll define a function to draw a primitive so I'll call it draw uh, draw quad and I'll call gl begin and begin mode dot quads and gl dot end oops sorry and I'll set the color to sky blue and I'll draw start drawing the vertices so this will be drawn uh, along the origin uh, we'll translate before drawing it I do not need to worry about that um, and uh, we'll also need an um, uh, and since the object has its own color, so the color should not be calculated by lighting. Uh, although we'll see it when we um, draw this object and build the application. So in the uh, we'll go to the renderf function where we draw the um, create, and after the pop matrix function, we can 
actually call uh, push the matrix again and we actually uh, we are doing this because we need to translate because we cannot draw the object at the origin because it will not be visible so we'll translate it to some point inside uh, on the z-axis and then I'll call the draw quad function so pop matrix right here and now I'll build it on the program to check if this is working so there it is uh, the object appears here in front of the crate but the problem is that it has some texture on the brown color of the texture on it so this is because we do not yet uh, remove the texture so we'll call we'll just disable the texturing so before we draw this object we'll disable the texturing but uh, now after um, you have disabled texturing the texture will not be uh, displayed in our program so um, to avoid that you will also enable the texturing after you have drawn this object so the te texturing will be disabled only for this object in our program so we first disable texturing and then we draw this object without the texturing and then we enable the texturing back so that the other objects in the program can use the texture and now we'll then run this and um, it'll have some of what of white some of this color um, this is because um, we've not specified the normals but we'll disable the lighting and it is perfectly uh, visible when we disable the lighting but uh, so in this case we have disabled the lighting and the blue color is visible so we'll only work with blending when the lighting is disabled we can disable lighting particularly for this object so what we'll do is after we call uh, after we disable texture we'll also disable lighting for this object and similar thing we'll also enable lighting after we have finished drawing the object so that other objects in the program can use the lighting so this op only this object will be drawn without the lighting operations now now we need to achieve transparency so the transparency actually is achieved through the fourth parameter of the color function so the color 3 function only takes three arguments uh, and the color 4 function takes four arguments the first three arguments are actually the same the RGB colors and the fourth argument is A which is alpha the alpha value so alpha value decide the extent of opacity of an object so let's see how that works so uh, so B will have uh, B is the translucent object here so it'll have the uh, extent of uh, opacity so let's suppose its extent of opacity is nothing so if uh, it has no opacity then that mean that means it is fully transparent and you can see the world through it uh, and if it is fully opaque you cannot see anything behind it so the opacity specified by the alpha value actually goes from 0, 0.0 to 1.0 1.0 is maximum um, you cannot specify parameters larger than this so at 0.0 .0, the object is fully opaque fully sorry fully transparent so fully transparent and at 1.0 the object is fully opaque and the values between 0.0, .0 and 1.0 the object is translucent so um, what we're going to achieve here will use the um, values between 0.0, .0 and 1.0 to make the object partially transparent so we'll use a value like 0.5 or 0.6 so let's suppose the um, alpha value for this object is 0.6 so we'll also do this in our program and when we specify the color 4 command we'll specify 0.6 as the alpha value of the color um, and for this to work you first need to enable blending so we'll only enable blending for this object because the rest of the objects are not using that here enable enable cap dot blend and we'll disable it after we have drawn the object because we don't need to um, use this after this and you also might want to disable the depth testing only for the transparent object so when you draw the transparent object you can uh, note, the, uh, note down the things which you need to enable and disable so depth testing similarly will enable it um, so we disable the depth testing because uh, it does not go hand in hand with the alpha blending there are various problems related to it um, if you want to have a look at the problems you can actually uh, do that on Google but um, I cannot uh, give an account of the problems here because that that will go way out of the scope of this tutorial so we have enabled the GL uh, so we have enabled the blending uh, but it will still not uh, be transparent 
Um, so that is because we have not yet specified the method how the, cal uh, the color of this overlapping area is calculated. So we first need to specify it. So that is the blend function. So what I'll do is I'll go above here inside the loaded function which is called uh, when the application is started. So we use this function to initialize stuff in our application. So we'll now initialize the blending stuff from it. So gl dot blend function specifies the parameters which will be used to calculate the blending. So there are two arguments, the source vector and the destination vector. So now let's uh, know what these are. So these are two objects and the object which is actually in front, which is the transparent one here, uh, is actually the source. And the object which is in the back, which is the opaque object, is the destination. So the color of the overlapping area will be calculated uh, using the color values of both the source and the destination. So as the alpha value here of the source is 0 0.6. So let's see how the color component of the overlapping area will be calculated. How it should be calculated. So now then we'll implement these vectors. So basic thing what we want is that um, this uh, should have the um, 0 .6, 0 0.6 of the color of the B object and the remaining portion which is 0 0.4 because this, these values are from 1. So the 0 0.6 of the color of the B object and remaining part is 0 0.4 0 0.4 of the color of the destination object so this is this is how it should work and if the alpha value is 0 0.8 then it will have 0 0.8 of the color of the B object and 0 0.2 sec 0 0.2 of the color of the D destination object so similarly if the alpha value is 1 then it will have uh, only the color component of B object which is the uh, source object so if it is in front of it and the alpha value is 1 the objects behind this will not be visible so let's see how the, uh, for 0 0.6 how it will be calculated so it will be the color of the source object B uh, multiplied by 0 0.6 the uh, alpha value uh, plus the color of the destination object which is R here multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.6 which is the remaining part so that will be the resultant color C so that C will be the color of this portion so basically now if you look at this equation oops um, this 0 0.6 it is the S vector so this is the S vector and the 1 minus 0 0.6 is the destination vector so we need to specify this as the arguments so the source vector will be calculated so the source vector will be equal to the alpha value so blending factor source dot src alpha so the so uh, alpha value of the source will be the blending factor uh, for the source and blending factor dest blending factor destination should be 1 minus the alpha value of the source object so this is how the blending will be calculated now we'll be on the program to check if this blending is working. There we go. We have a transparent object. So it has an extent uh, of opacity equal to 0 0.6 or the alpha value equal to 0 0.6. Um, you can now try increasing and decreasing the alpha value. Um, although I'll, what I'll do is I'll implement a keyboard interface to um, do this. So I'll go in the global scope here and I'll declare a double which will be called um, alpha val which will be equal to 0 0.5 initially and I'll go down the uh, function which draws this stuff and alpha well this the alpha value of the object and this variable will be controlled by the keyboard input so I'll go up here in the key press function uh, in the key down function actually um, and I'll implement the interface for the keyboard else if e dot key equal to key dot i so the i will increase the alpha value um, so alpha val plus equal to 0 0.1 so it will increase the alpha value by this extent and if the alpha value goes above 1 sorry if alpha value is greater than 1.0 then alpha val is equal to 1.0 so this will limit the uh, alpha value um, up to 1 so it cannot go beyond this and we also need to limit it to 0 so if uh, and key k uh, 
the K letter um, pressed on the keyboard decreases the alpha value and so it'll have the opposite effect it'll subtract 0 0.1 from the current alpha value and if the alpha value goes below 0 then the alpha value will become 0 so these two will change the alpha value of the object and they will also keep it between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 so the range of the alpha value is 0, 0.0 to 1.0 and now let's build in on the program to check if these both things are working um, so here is our object and I'll rotate it a bit and then I'll use the I to increase the alpha value and it goes to fully opaque and I'll use the K to decrease the alpha value and it goes to fully transparent right now it is not even visible so I'll go on increasing this and if you want a smooth effect uh, for this uh, you can also use uh, you can use this in your um, uh, applications to make them look cool so if you want a smooth effect you can actually use the um, continuous key presses using the um, key states so this is actually all about uh, alpha blending here we do not cover all of it but we covered enough of it that we'll need in our uh, OpenGL applications so that is all for this part and if you enjoy this video please drop a like and thanks for watching